uh, let's pray and begin. Uh, I'd like to request one of us to lead in prayer. Nikhil, would you pray? Thank you, Jesus. We come before you in the name of Jesus this time, Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord. We are going to uh, learn from him, Father, to understand everything, Lord. Also, understand every word, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Nikhil. So, uh, we've touched on all the subjects so far, and we have one remaining in our uh, from our notes, which is fasting. So today we will study about fasting, what the Bible has to say, uh, you know, about this particular uh, uh, act of devotion that we present to God. What is the meaning of fasting? What is the best way of fasting as far as the Bible is concerned? And what are the rewards of fasting? Okay, so that's what we are going to discuss about. So you can turn in your notes to chapter 18. It's a fairly uh, elaborate chapter, so I'll do my best to cover as much content as possible. But I would also suggest that you go back and listen to a sermon series. I forget the year, maybe 2016, I'm not sure. But you have a series called as The Chosen Fast. So there are four sermons under that series uh, which have content from these notes so you'll you'll be able to receive much more if you take time to listen to all four of those sermons so i'll try and cover you know as much content in the time that is available to me so beginning with uh, what fasting really is in the old and the new testament we see this practice even in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, it is a spiritual discipline. Okay, spiritual discipline. So spiritual discipline is anything that one has to develop uh, and that has to be coupled with self-control. Okay, For example, reading the Bible. That's a discipline. If a believer does not have that discipline, if they don't have the practice of regular Bible reading, then you know it can uh, negatively affect their spiritual walk with the Lord. Similarly, prayer. Prayer is a discipline. Uh, we also call it a discipline because it may not come naturally or easily. Okay? For example, if we take exercise, it may not be something that we love to do. Initially, yes, but after a while, we have to discipline ourselves or have some self-control, self-regulation and say, no, this is important, so I'm going to do it or you know anything else in life which you have to do because it's good for you so discipline is that something that you develop uh, with determination and self control and so uh, even fasting is a discipline it is a spiritual discipline because it is a practice which is helpful for our uh, spiritual life so that is what fasting really is Feel free to you know interrupt me at any point because I know uh, this is a subject people have many questions about. So same thing uh, holds true for our online audience here. Uh, now when we talk about fasting and in the New Testament, Jesus did mention uh, in Matthew 9 that when the bridegroom has gone, then his, uh, you know, yeah, the, the people will fast. Okay, so now that Jesus has ascended into heaven, he's our bridegroom. So this is a part of our devotion and our worship to him that we fast. And Jesus also, uh, in a sense, you want to call it a prediction or a mention. He mentioned it. In Matthew chapter 9, the scriptures are given. 14 through 17. We won't be reading through every passage because... There's a lot that uh, we, we have. So Jesus also mentioned it. So it's not, not like, uh, you know, something that, because sometimes we, we say things like, oh, when we are under grace, why should we fast? Or, you know, why should we have uh, this kind of an expression of our devotion to God? God already listens. God is already our father. You know, you have 
concepts like that. But you see, there are certain useful instructions in God's word because God knows that unless we we walk by those principles, we'll miss out. Okay. So Jesus also said when the bridegroom has uh, gone or when Jesus ascends, those who believe in him will fast. So uh, he ought it to be important for the believer to practice. Now, when we talk about fasting, there is a right way of fasting. Okay, Jesus in his teachings, he said, when you fast, okay, don't uh, put on a sad face so that others can see it and uh, give you credit for your fasting. Or, you know, when you're fasting, um, what else did he say? Don't do it to show others. He, he said that put on, you know, anoint your head with oil. Look, look happy. Don't try to do it to get people's attention. So these are all things he said to have the right motivation for fasting. Okay, because fasting is who are we fasting for? Who do we fast for? Can you say it loudly? God, Jesus. So when we fast and we make people the audience, we are missing the focus. We are fasting for God, and God is the one who is seeing it, uh, observing it, and who will rightly reward that fast. So people are not uh, the focus or our attention. Now, talking about fasting, there are different kinds of fasts. We will go over each of them. Okay. So what I'll do is let me quickly talk about the next section here, which is uh, the benefits of fasting. And then I will come to the different kinds of fasting. So what is the advantage when a person fasts? What do you think? How does it help to uh, fast? What do you get out of it? Any any thoughts regarding that? Even the online uh, batch here. How does it help to, to fast? How does it make a difference? Strength. OK. Strength, that's one answer. Spiritual strength. OK, spiritual strength. Anything else? Humble. OK, humble oneself. That's that's right. OK, what else? How does fasting help? What do you think? OK, so fasting draws us near to God. OK, what else? So fasting uh, helps us focus better on the word of God. OK, sure. OK, so uh, fasting helps us to receive from God. OK, what else? OK, so fasting is a. Uh, an expression of our desire for God. Okay, desire for God above other things in life that one could uh, desire for. Okay, so it's a, that intense desire it shows towards God. Okay, so some comments here. It says, uh, "Focus and pray, committed to pray, um, and edify spiritual life." Okay, uh, another comment says it brings the flesh in subjection to the spirit. So, uh, thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts. Uh, what you've shared is true, it's correct. Some of which I will repeat, you know, in the benefits of fasting while I'm going to talk now. Uh, but there are some unique points as well. So, what are the benefits? How does it help? So, as one of you shared, Humbling ourselves or repentance. So if I want to show or express my repentance towards God, I could be, we'll see later that, you know, you can fast for yourself or you can fast on behalf of others. So we repent 
and for that we can fast okay and in the bible there are examples like that people fasted for the sake of repentance so it shows that heart towards god then fasting also helps um to strengthen our focus okay it strengthens our focus uh now these are things which are kind of hard to explain because you will see it in your experience when you fast you will begin to notice that as far as the word of god is concerned your your ability to receive from what the word is saying it increases okay um and that's an observation now, i don't know which bible verse to give you for that but our focus and our attention uh, for the word and many things of god it actually becomes sharper okay people who fast uh it 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 does that for us okay so it strengthens our focus it increases intensity okay increases intensity means if you remember the time in uh, matthew chapter 17 there is a father he brings his son for uh, deliverance to the disciples but the disciples are not able to cast out the demon so you know uh, jesus does the needful but later when the disciples ask you know jesus what went wrong he says this kind will not come out except by fasting prayer and fasting so why did jesus say that why do you think he said that the demon wouldn't come out except by prayer and fasting but how how does fasting help casting out a demon spiritual okay yeah so the okay so um kanan is thinking along the right direction he saying it strengthens spiritually um if we pray as well as fast that's true because what it, fasting really does is i said it gives us a focus isn't it but it also strengthens our faith and what do you need to uh, you know move in healing or deliverance or any any anything in the kingdom of god what do you need what do we need faith did i hear faith okay that's true so faith is what is very very necessary to in this case you know cast out a demon and maybe it was a very stubborn demon but jesus is saying this kind will not go out except by fa fasting and praying because what will fasting and praying do for us it will strengthen our faith so when faith is strong we will be able to cast out the demon so that's what fasting does for us uh, and uh, you know we can strengthen our faith you want to intensify your faith you want a greater focus fast okay it really helps fasting needless to say develops discipline discipline is uh, going beyond the natural uh, capacity and the natural uh, appetites of the body you know we may we may want to eat we may like certain foods we may you know whatever our body prefers we are saying no not now later so that is discipline okay and the more we discipline ourselves it's in general also it's very good because you have self control um, you know you you can manage your own self you're not out of control so that is managing oneself it deepens or develops discipline in our lives so in that sense also it is uh, helpful as far as the spiritual things are concerned one of the fruit part of the fruit of the spirit is discipline isn't it self control self control so as a believer uh that is a fruit of the spirit i need to have self control and especially you know when when we talk about uh ministry when we talk about uh, uh moving in the gifts of the spirit yes flowing is important but also self control is very important because sometimes we may 
we may not be sensitive maybe spirit of god is saying something but i want to do something else so if i take off on a tangent i won't be able to sync with what the holy spirit is talking to me at that time so self control is very important i should be able to control my emotions i should be able to control you know, i want to say something or i want to express in that way being led by the holy spirit i know how to manage to regulate myself so that's a fruit of the spirit and it's very helpful uh, even as far as flowing in the answer but when we develop it fasting will help us to uh, become more self controlled then it deepens consecration consecration is um it it means dedication okay so um when you have certain vessels for example okay nowadays in our churches we don't we are not so um you know uh, traditional uh, those days they used to have those you know very special vessels which they use for communion and it was exclusively for communion nobody will touch it so what do what do those vessels uh, what are they term dedicated consecrated it's unto the lord don't touch it. so anything which is set apart we also use the word holy consecrated dedicated so when we fast and pray what we do is we dedicate ourselves to god we consecrate so we are setting ourselves apart or you know you're setting your your um, talents your abilities everything apart you say god is only for you giving it to you so dedicating oneself when we fast that's what we do we are saying lord i'm consecrating i'm keeping myself only for you so fasting is helpful to express our consecration to god deepens our consecrations so these are all some benefits i'm sure there must be many more but some of the key benefits that you and i can reap and walk in as we practice fasting so notice one important thing about fasting is it is a discipline it is changing who who is it changing is it changing god god's mind god's heart god's character no it's not like uh, a protest right that okay i will not eat for 21 days god has to answer my prayer when you approach fasting that way what we are trying to do is change god my fasting will change god okay but in the bible that's not the kind of fasting we see what is fasting doing fasting is changing me i am deepening in my consecration i am having a greater focus i am you know getting a uh, revelation from scripture i am becoming you know self disciplined so i am being strengthened so my faith is being strengthened so yes answers to prayer come but why do they come because i have a better understanding of the word my faith is increasing so all these things will lead to answers right successful prayer effective prayer so when we fast we are changed we are not trying to change god we change, get changed when we fast so that is the benefit of fasting and fasting will also position us it says so when i um, take time fasting maybe my heart is very far away from god or maybe i'm in a lot of doubt unbelief um uh so you know i could be in my own state but as i do fasting the right way i'll get positioned my heart will sort of come to that place before god where i'll be able to receive from god okay uh, it does something to my faith and my inner strength so that is the way in which fasting works now talking about fasting fasting changes us yeah. so even seventy you can go by because jesus said like uh, this kind shall not go out apart from fasting and prayer so we imply 
okay so if we fast what happens does it change the demon no right because we know that demons are the way they are obviously they can't change but something within me is changing that is my faith is increasing so it's like a um, uh, inference you can draw out of that one passage also fasting uh, you know it, it changes us Okay, it is the primary uh, perspective, Anand. Fasting changes us. It doesn't change God. Yeah, see, even prayer and fa even prayer, what did we say when we started foundations of right prayer? We said we should know the will of God. Then you pray for the will of God. Okay, but when we approach prayer and fasting, like what you are saying, if I pray, if I fast, God will take notice of me. He will give me what I want. See, in that, what we are trying to do, we are trying to change God's uh, decision. But God's decision is God's will, and God's will is his word. We already have his word. All things are possible through Christ. Okay. See, uh, you just need a fair amount of, uh, you know, right understanding and judgment. So when I read the Bible, okay, I do come across, you know, passages like this. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Luke 137, uh, you know, uh, for nothing shall be impossible with God. So many things we come across. But when you read the rest of the Bible, you know, uh, you, you need to, we need to know that what we are believing for is in line with the rest of the Bible also. For example, I will just tell you. Now, can I, can I say that uh, Jesus walked on water? Okay, I will also walk on water. So I'll go find a lake here somewhere near Hennur. Okay, I'll invite all of you and I'll say, okay, all of you come. I'm going to walk on water. For nothing shall be impossible with God. No? Or I... Imagine somebody says, I'll jump off from the whatever, you know, any tall building here in Bangalore and I can fly. I'm not going to fall. For oh, with God, all things are possible. Ask anything in my name. Out of context. You're understanding what I'm saying. Does the scripture say, ask anything? Yeah, it says. Does the scripture say, for with God, nothing shall be impossible? Yeah, it says. But look at the entire context. There are certain laws that God has put in place. So sometimes when Jesus broke bread, when Jesus turned water into wine, when Jesus walked on water, right? These are exceptions. When there was a need to bless the people, yes, he did it. But he did it only once. He didn't make a practice out of it. But in general, as you look at the laws, you know, there is something called the law of gravity. If, you, if I throw anything up in the air, it will come down. So, based on with God, nothing shall be impossible. If I try to fly, it's foolishness. So, point I'm making is, the verse says what it says, but how does it connect with the rest of what God has spoken? That's what I must, and you know, especially all of you studying the Bible, learning the Bible, this is how we, we should uh, understand. You're getting my point? Yeah, so that's how it works. So when we fast also, it's not that we are trying to shake and change what God has already intended. No, we know the will of God through his word. And we are saying, God, you said it. We believe you will do it. Okay, so when I'm doing that, I'm increasing my faith to receive what he has already said. Okay, I'm disciplining myself to like um, receive everything. That God has in store for me. So that's how fasting also works. Okay, great. Good question. Let's go on. Uh, I said different kinds of fastings we can see. Um, we'll go deep into it uh, soon. So there's something like absolute fasting, there is partial fasting. Absolute is when uh, one doesn't eat or drink, you know, anything for a couple of days. Partial is when you do eat and drink, but then you maybe select, uh, you know, some foods. Or it's not only about eating. We can also fast uh, as far as our time is concerned. 
Okay, so maybe we like uh, entertainment, uh, but when we fast, we can say no. That time I'm going to give it to God. I'm not going to waste it, you know, on movies or something else that I do. So fasting can be food, but it can also be in other areas. The whole point is, I'm consecrating myself. I am disciplining myself. You understand? For God. So that's how it works. So absolute fast, partial fast. There are um, examples in the in the Bible. We look at it you know, a little bit later. Um, so abstinence. We use the term abstinence. Abstinence is to stay away from. We stay away from generally food. Okay, as far as fasting is concerned, we can fast by ourselves or we can fast together with people. So you have individuals, Jesus fasted, Moses fasted, David fasted. So individuals fasted. But when you look at groups of people, you know, Ezra, he called for a fast. He told all the people, everyone will fast, including the animals. Okay, so a group can also fast uh, or Esther. She said, okay, all my people come together, we'll all fast. So we can I'm mainly doing is we are not just staying away from food, but we are communing with God. You know, we are spending time in the presence of God. And that's the normal way. Generally, you would find like even Daniel, he fasted and he sought understanding from the Lord. So what is he doing? He's fasting, but he's also praying, right? So fasting is not um, just skipping food. If I am only skipping food, that is, that's dieting, right? Because you have no spiritual goals. Just, I'm, I just skip meals, that's it. So but fasting is a very spiritual activity and you need to couple it with maybe reading the Bible or praying, um, or, you know, take time to worship, but give your attention and your focus to God. That is fasting. And that's the right way to fast. There are some examples here um, given in scripture. You can go through you know, each one of them. So how long can a person fast? Anyone? How long should anybody fast? Three days. Okay. Anand recommends three days. Yes. Who's recommending 40 days? Okay, Francis. Oh, 39, very specific. 39 days, Francis is recommending that. Uh, how about the others? Depends on the person. Okay, depends on the person. 40. Okay, 40. Depends on the problem. <laughs> depends on the problem. Okay, sure. Yeah, very big problem, long fast. Correct, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Any other options? How many days do you recommend? Okay, here on the chat, no specific time limit. Okay, no specific time limit. That's all. Only these many options. So we have to pick from any one of this. 39, 40, no, no specific time limit. All right. So uh, as far as the Bible is concerned, you do see um, certain durations. But again, you know, it's not hard and fast. We should not uh, go by what we see. It's best to be led by the Spirit of God. Just pray and see what, what do you... Um, sense in your spirit if you feel okay I need to fast for three days maybe three days is the best in that uh, season uh, and you fasted for three days you feel no I need to fast another two days okay that's fine but be led by the spirit you know, that is the best way to decide on how many days to fast it's not like see later we'll see there is something known as a chosen fast or the right way of fasting now to say that if I fast 40 days, surely I'll get an answer. What is this? You fasted only 10 days. How can God answer? The length of fasting and the results, it's not, uh, you know, like 
you know, it, it's not connected. It's the way we fast which is more important than how long we fast. We can fast 40 days, but we can do very ineffective fasting. Possible. Did, did we get it? So length of fast is good, but length of fast is not primarily what determines the results of an effective fast. So bear that in mind. So in the Bible, one night fast is there. You know, Daniel, the king, uh, he he had some questions. He couldn't sleep through the night. So he fasted uh, one night the, in Daniel 6. Then uh, one day fast uh, is, is seen. I'm just listing out. And you can always see examples of this. Three days fast, three days, three nights. Paul fasted three days. Esther and her a group of people fasted three days, seven days. You know, David, when his son was going to die, he fasted seven days. Fourteen days is there when people were uh, um, on the ship in Acts 27. They didn't eat food for, for 14 days. So they fasted 14 days, 21 days. Daniel, when he was praying, uh, and you know there was an interruption, demonic interruption, he fasted 21 days. Then 40 days. Moses fasted 40 days, Elijah 40 days, you have uh, Jesus who fasted 40 days. So there are different numbers. Now, what if I do a fast which is not here, like you know, uh, Francis said 39, it's okay. Whatever the Holy Spirit puts on your heart, you go with that. And that is more important. Okay, So not necessarily the length of days, but how you do this fast is more important. Okay, so what are the kinds of fasting we can do? I already said food. We can fast food. Um, so when we fast food, we can maybe skip a meal or two meals or you know pick any of the fasts that we were describing. Some people um, call, okay, I'll come to that later. Uh, so, uh, in some instances, they say you just skip food but you can drink water. Uh, and in some instances, don't drink uh, don't drink water also when you fast. So it's like a complete, complete kind of a fast. Mm, I, I mean, uh, what I believe is be led by the spirit, but also know the capacity of your body. Okay, don't try to do things which are... See, because it's not about harming yourself. Fasting is not about harming ourselves. Yes, sometimes we may feel a burden, a repentance, a pain in our heart where we feel, okay, I don't even want food. I want to seek God, right? Yeah? Haan, atma ko paana hota hai, tar paana. Oh, okay. Uh, so, Nikhil is saying that uh, it's important to afflict, okay, or make, uh, experience some distress. When you fast, mm. Mm. Ah. it's wasted. Ah. Mm. Okay, 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 got it. Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. So what he's saying, um, fasting without having a spiritual intention or goal, spending time with God and all, if we do that, we are actually harming ourselves. It's said pointless. That's uh, what Nikhil is saying. Okay, I got that point. So see, we must keep in mind that it's not about harming ourselves. Okay? As believers, sometimes we feel that, oh, I'll be more spiritual if I'm fasting, 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 fasting. But okay. If God is calling you, that's your ministry, you do it. But it doesn't mean that I can harm my body. Because the Bible also says the body is what? It's a temple. It's a temple of God. So by not thinking, not using my understanding and my wisdom, if I try to harm my body, right? Suppose, I'm just saying, uh, if let's say I don't have the capacity to fast for 10 days, okay? But I push myself to do that. If the Spirit of God is telling me with all 
a preparation yes might as well go ahead and do it but when i know that i'm not supposed to and even i don't have any witness of the holy spirit telling me if i push and i have some issues with my health it's not god's fault and if we say oh i am fasting god you are not listening see i'm sick also but that's not wise stewardship right this body god gave us we need this body uh, to co-work with god if we didn't have the physical body how would we serve god on the earth you know we need this body and so we have to take care of the body so that's how we understand so when we say refrain from food refrain from water what kind of fast can i undertake be wise about that also because i mean if you read science literature there's a lot about fasting uh, on the uh, you know internet because people have discovered now subtract the mind uh, the spiritual things that we are talking in this class but even just fasting has a thousand benefits so there are fitness guys and you know people who who recommend fasting there are fasting groups where people do it for you know good health they do it to keep their body in shape they do it to lose weight they do it for mental concentration so many reasons why fasting is done but you know they also think how much can my body take so there also there is a limit they say like the ester fast 3 days of water uh, no water no food apparently it's very tough like without water it's very very difficult to do a fast like that they call it the ester fast the other fasts where uh, you skip meals and you only have water uh, apparently a human being can go on for 40 days easily without any problems you know uh, so we have to also think about our body that's i want you all to you know uh, make that very clear in your heart so go by the leading of the spirit okay if you skip meals uh, or you decide skip food skip water uh, we could also skip certain foods that we desire that people call it the daniel fast you know daniel he decides that i will not eat uh, things that give me pleasure or i'll only eat you know normal basic kind of food that's a daniel fast many people do that they say uh, that okay i will not eat meat for 20 days i'll only eat like you know vegetables uh, uh, staple ri rice and all it's up to us what do you want to do which kind of fast that's okay but the result of the fast and the the kind of fast we are doing for god is more important so we can do daniel fast uh, or i said not just food time so we can say okay i'm spending too much time on my mobile that time i'm going to give to god or something else the a time which i have extra time i'll give to god so fasting you fast movies tv a lot of young people do that because sometimes food is okay they can skip but tv they can't skip you know so what is it that you love when you decide to give that up that is a real fast so you know think about that uh, so refraining from certain activities and the bible also has something known as the fasted life okay the fasted life so this is connected to uh, people in the old testament who were referred to as nazrites nazrites so these people lived their life the entire life was a consecration so you had men like samuel the prophet samson you remember so uh, uh, here in our notes in number 6 1 through 21 you can read more about the nazarite life where uh, they were not allowed to drink anything you know which is of a grape derivative so you can't drink um, uh, intoxicating drinks you can't cut your hair so basically there were many things they followed to express their devotion to god their entire lifetime and of course samson we know he was also a nazarite but he uh sinned against god okay but the concept is entire lifetime is dedicated to god okay so as part of that dedication there can be certain things we decide to do or not to do uh to you know offer up our worship so that is 
फास्टेड लाइफ फास्टेड लाइफ और नाजराइट यस सो या आई थिंक वी अंडरस्टूड अ कपल ऑफ थिंग्स हियर अबाउट फास्टिंग वी विल टॉक अबाउट द चोज इन फास्ट एंड होपफुली अबाउट द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ द चोज इन फास्ट टूडेज सेशन आइजाया फिफ्टी एट आइजाया फिफ्टी एट वर्सेज वन थ्रू फोर्टीन दैट इज द पैसेज वी नीड टू टर्न टू सो आई वुल रिक्वेस्ट अस टू प्लीज गो दैट ओपन अप passage if somebody can read the passage i'll be very happy it's kind of long but let's read that passage before our break and then we shall come back and discuss from the passage in the next session 58 yeah full yeah 1 to 14 so maybe one person can read 1 to 7 other person can read 8 to 40 yeah please go ahead Yeshaya 58 Cry loud spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet trumpet tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins get they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their god they ask of me ordinance of justice they take delight in approaching god why have we fasted they say and you have not seen why why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice in fact in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers indeed you you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the feast of wickedness you will not fast as you do the do this day to make your voice heard on high is it a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes sackcloth and ashes would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the lord is this not the fast that i have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke is it not to share your bread with the hungry and the and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh okay thank you um Uh, well, one more person can read remaining. Then your light shall break forth like the morning; your healing shall spring forth speedily, speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your great God. Then, then you shall. call and the lord will answer you shall cry and he will say here i am if you take away the your uh, yoke from your midst pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the atte uh, afflicted soul then your light shall down in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noon day the lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in in drought and strength your own uh, bones you shall be like a what a what water garden and like a spring of water whose water do not fail those from among you shall uh, build the old old waste place places you shall raise up the foundation of many generation and you shall be called the repair repair of of the bridge the the restorer of streets to dwell in if you turn away your foot from the sabbath from doing your a uh, pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy day of the lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own way not uh, finding your own pleasure 
nor nor speaking your own words then you shall delight yourself in the lord and i will cause you to ride on on the high hill of hills of the earth and and feed you feed you with the hierate hierate of jacob your father the mouth of the lord has spoken yes sir. thank you uh, thank you nikhil so as you can see uh, though people were fasting god rebuked them and he brought out a couple of things which they were doing their standards were not pleasing to god so the act of fasting itself uh, was not valid you know in that sense so god is pointing out and he's showing look you're fasting you're doing all these things but your heart is not correct your motives are not correct your actions are not correct so uh, we will come back and we will look at what our motives should be like when we actually fast and when we do what we call the chosen fast or the fast which pleases god we'll also see what are the blessings that follow okay so let's go for a break i'll come back in 10 minutes and uh, let's continue from there thank you thank you for the online uh, comments but thank you for the online comments i can see them okay thank you so much <laughs> 